of worship of Cedar Park First United Methodist Church. We're back once again in the season of ordinary time. And that doesn't mean that this is just ho-hum ordinary. It's from the Latin word which to order, to count. And uh, this is the second Sunday in this season of ordinary time. The color is green. We are growing together on the vine, the true vine that is Christ. I'm so glad that all of you are here today. And I hope you'll find somewhere on your row the registration pad and you can give us a record of your attendance. That's always appreciated. And if you uh, have a new email address or a new telephone number, if you'd leave that with us, that would be greatly appreciated so we can keep up uh, with your comings and goings. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow, the nation celebrates the birth of Martin Luther King. And so all of our hymns today are African-American spirituals. And I hope you'll enjoy that. You'll, you know most of them. Uh, uh, the inside back of your worship bulletin, there's uh, information about the church on the right-hand side. Uh, and on the left-hand side, there's a calendar of events this week at Cedar Park Church. Uh, we do have some wonderful Sunday school classes. Uh, Walter is in a group uh, uh, hearing a college professor talk about uh, religions of the axial age. And uh, Joanne, pardon? We're about to switch to a survey of the New Testament. A survey of the New Testament. Okay, let me know when that happens. And Joanne Doak just came uh, from a wonderful class. Karen Goodman and others are in it where they're looking at the 23rd Psalm, and I think there'll be some other Psalms that they'll be exploring. So we have two wonderful uh, adult uh, Sunday school classes, and uh, you're encouraged to join them if, if you like, over in the multi-ministries building. The other uh, opportunity for learning is going to start February the 3rd for nine Thursdays at 10 o'clock, either online or in person, We'll be reading and discussing a book, A Living Gospel, by Robert Ellsberg. Uh, Ellsberg is kind of an authority on the lives of the saints, and he's picked a, a couple of lives from uh, modern-day uh, holy people and how they uh, impact our own lives. And so if you're interested, there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. Bob Boker is a good friend of ours, and he takes care of Hill Country Community Ministries. Please always remember, if you're at the store, to pick up a few items, uh, and there's a bin in the lobby, and Bob takes them over to Hill Country Community Ministries, and he's always appreciative of your uh, offerings, and uh, there's also uh, clothing and, and toiletries. Uh, thousands of people um, each month go to Hill Country Community Ministries for assistance. There's a great need, and so your uh, assistance is uh, greatly appreciated. Let us now together worship God.
stand now if you're able and join me for the greeting. Let us praise the Lord. Who sets our feet upon a rock. God makes our steps secure. And puts a new song in our mouths. Let us speak of God's faithfulness. And sing of God's salvation. Join me now in singing Swing Low, Sweet Cheer. God of steadfast love, at the wedding in Cana, your son Jesus turned water into wine, delighting all who were there. Transform our hearts by your spirit, that we may use our varied gifts to show forth the light of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to ask the children to come forward now. Izzy, do you want to come up and have a moment together? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down right here. You want to sit down? Okay, so Izzy, I have a question to ask you. Do you know what a curve is? Do you know what a curve is? It's, a, it's not a straight line. It's kind of a curved line, right? Well, I want to tell you about a world where there were lots and lots of curves. And there were red curves, and there were green curves, and there were yellow curves, and there were blue curves. But the only problem was they didn't like each other all that much. The red curves didn't trust the green curves. The green curves didn't trust the yellow curves. It was just a mess. But each curve had its own song and their own stories. And the uh, red curves loved to work. And so their song was work, 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 work. 
And uh, the yellow curves, they love the number two. And so they would sing two, 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 two. And the green curves love to gather flowers. So they would sing get, 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 get. And then the blue curves had a song that sounded like laughter. Her, 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 her. But the thing is, the red curves didn't like the green curves. And whenever the green curves were singing, get, 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 they'd cover their ears. They'd say, ooh, I don't want to, I don't, I don't like them. But there was one day that a little curve, and I'm not sure what color it was, had a dream. And the dream was, we should try to get together. And so the little curve went to the red curves and said, would you help me? Let's get together. And went to the blue curves and would you help me? And they said, well, I don't know. I don't know. I'd be afraid to do that. But the little curve got all the curves together and she put the blue curves on the bottom and then she had the green curves get on top of them and then the yellow curves and then the red curves. And you know what they made? They made a rainbow. And they started, she says, let's all sing our songs together and see how they sound. Work, work. To, to get get her her work work to get her work together work together it was a beautiful song now why in the world am I telling this story because Martin Luther King had a dream that hey blue and red and green and yellow who cares what color you are God loves everybody and that's why we remember Martin Luther King tomorrow it's his birthday do you remember Here's a picture of him. You ever seen Martin Luther King? This fellow right here? No? no? Well, you'll have to ask your grandfather about him. Maybe he can tell you all about him. Because uh, he, he was alive about 50-something years ago. All right, we're going to say a prayer together, shall we? Stand up and we'll have a, a prayer together. I'll hold your hands. God, thank you so much for Izzy. And thank you that she's here today, oh God. Thank you for Martin Luther King and all your servants, O oh God, that helped to spread your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, do you want a little uh, bag there? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Candy. candy, I love candy. All right, we'll go back to our seats now. As we prepare to hear today's scripture lesson, I invite you to pray with me now the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62. I invite you to hear this word. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until its vindication shines out like the dawn and its salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the rulers your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as one rejoices in marrying one's beloved, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together now this little light of mine.
comes to us from the Gospel of John, the second chapter, and as a way of honoring the Christ who speaks here, and I invite you to stand if you're able to hear this Gospel lesson. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing, there were, there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. The story of the people of God in the Old Testament ends in failure. Disappointment, disaster, displacement, despair, that's all the hard words that begin with D that I could muster. The city of Jerusalem and its temple and the monarchy there, they were all terminated. The leadership was deported to be refugees in a foreign land. And then in an inexplicable explosion of hope-filled poetry, the book of Isaiah runs toward its end with three wondrous chapters of prophetic imagination. Chapter 60, rise and shine, for your light has come. Chapter 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And then our scripture lesson today, chapter 62, where God says, for Zion's sake I will not keep silent. The silence of despair is about to be broken by God. These three chapters together constitute a massive declaration given without justification or explanation that there will be a new beginning for Israel. The grip of failure and despair is broken by this awesome, buoyant poetry. There will be a new Jerusalem. There will be a new temple, a new covenant, a new beginning. In this wondrous passage, from Isaiah chapter 62, a great epiphany is coming. God says, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. And then near the end of our reading, the poet gives us three images to contradict old failures with new possibilities. The first image, They've been called forsaken, but now you will be called, my delight is in her. The imagery is of a, a failed marriage in which the woman in a patriarchal society is abandoned because she is barren. But now she is restored to well-being because her husband takes delight in her. The move is from abandonment to delight. 
A second image is that you are desolate, which in a patriarchal society means you have no children. But now you are married, capable of bearing children, the deep joy of new birth. In a third image, Jerusalem will be like, like a bride with a rejoicing bridegroom. The newness will be like a wedding party. These three images, they're images of a new young love that brings joy, a total contradiction of present failure. But let me comment for just a moment on the second of these three images. Desolate, no children, barren, and then married. I know you've heard of the old Canaanite god, Baal. That's the god of agriculture who was said to bring rain and cause crops to flourish. In our verse... A little technical grammar now, so bear with me. The word married, that is made fruitful and joyous, is actually, bear with me now, the feminine passive participle of Baal. She who has been made fruitful. She who has been made pregnant. The name of Baal has been declined so that the feminine passive participle of of Baal is you may recognize this, Beulah land, Beulah land. The land that was empty and savage by war has been made generative and productive and flourishing. The right translation really is pregnant, but the very proper translation committee could not say pregnant, so they just said married. So imagine the poet addresses this helpless, hopeless, barren people who are displaced refugees and declares Your land is pregnant. Your history is pregnant with new possibility. You're loaded with new futures. It's the joyous imagery of bride and bridegroom and and this fabulous wedding party. All Israel could sing and dance about new possibility and God can sing and dance with them in this new possibility. The scene changes in our gospel reading. But Jesus is also at a wedding party. This one is is no different, really. There is dancing and singing, lots of eating, no doubt, joking about having many children. And Jesus is working the crowd. He changes everything, as he always does. He changes water into wine. He intrudes into the party with deep newness. And John calls his act a sign. New wine, given inexplicably, it's a sign of the power of Jesus to bring newness. The wedding is a sign of new futures. Jesus is hosting a party of new history that cannot be held in old wineskins. He makes all things new. Now, isn't that exactly what Martin Luther King Jr. was doing as we remember him today? He lived and worked in a similar setting of displacement, disaster and despair. Slavery had made a huge population to be refugees in their own land. And there he is, a poet like Isaiah. I have a dream, he said. Isaiah had imagined a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem, a new temple. Jesus imagined a new kingdom, a new political economic arrangement that could not be contained in old patterns of social power. And Martin dreamed of us as all together in dignity and justice. Isaiah and Jesus and Martin, all three of them urged us to newness that deeply contradicts all the old ways that constrain us. Isaiah says, welcome to Beulah land, a land pregnant with possibility. Jesus brings new wine, the wine of the kingdom of God, the new neighborliness that does justice for all. And Martin dreams of a nation where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. All of these bold witnesses testify to the pregnant possibilities that are as sure as God is sure. Now, is that sufficient for us? Are we among the displaced refugees who believe our setting has no way to the future? Are you a carrier of anxiety about the future that just immobilizes you? Are you a practitioner of fatigue that distorts your best self? If you are any of these, then this is a word for you. A word has been uttered that is life-changing. A word by Isaiah about pregnancy. A word by Jesus about new wine. A word by Martin about a dream. 
almost 57 years ago, Martin stood in front of the state capital of Alabama in downtown Montgomery before a crowd of 25,000 people. It was the conclusion of the civil rights protest known as the Selma March, where nearly 2,000 people marched 54 miles from Selma to Montgomery over three days in support of voting rights for African Americans. That day in Montgomery, King had this to say to express the pain and the triumph of the struggle. He said, we're on the move now. Yes, we're on the move and no wave of racism can stop us. Let us therefore continue our triumphant march to the realization of the American dream. Let us march on segregated schools until every vestige of segregated and inferior education becomes a thing of the past. And blacks and whites study side by side in the socially healing context of the classroom. Let us march on poverty until no American parent has to skip a meal so that their children can eat. Let us march on poverty until wrinkled stomachs in Mississippi are filled and the idle industries of Appalachia are realized and revitalized and broken lives in sweltering ghettos are mended and, re and, men and remolded. He went on to say the road ahead is not altogether a smooth one. There are no broad highways that lead us easily and inevitably to quick solutions, but we must keep going. The only normalcy that we will settle for is the normalcy that recognizes the dignity and worth of all of God's children. The only normalcy that we will settle for is the normalcy of brotherhood, the normalcy of true peace, the normalcy of justice. I know you're asking today, how long will it take, he said. Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men, darken their understanding, and drive bright-eyed wisdom from her sacred throne? How long will justice be crucified and truth bear it? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, however frustrating the hour, it will not be long, because truth crushed to earth will rise again. How long? Not long, because you will reap what you sow. How long? Not long, because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. How long? Not long because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth a trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. And let all God's people say, Amen. As a way of affirming our faith, I invite you to stand now as we uh, affirm the faith uh, as contained in the faith statement of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. We turn our hearts now to God in prayer, and I direct your attention to the back of your worship bulletin where you'll find a list of prayer concerns for your consideration. We want to remember the many who are suffering presently from the coronavirus, uh, Carolyn and Miranda, and Miranda's uh, daughter Bailey, uh, both uh, are doing better. Uh, we lift up uh, Corey Van Rensburg, who is also suffering the entire Longoria family, and uh, Suzette's uh, husband, Jim, uh, tested positive on Friday, and that canceled their uh, mission trip, unfortunately. We also lift up Sterling Hartman, who was involved in a traffic accident this week and then was hospitalized uh, for observation and may be going to a rehab facility afterwards. So prayers for all of these in their 
pain and suffering. As we pray, let's sing together the three verses of It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. All right, so is this a resident at Lake Lion Oaks? Carmen uh, is waiting for a result of a, a COVID test to see if she has COVID as well. And so we lift her up for the Lord's blessing and healing, and so we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, Mark? Uh, I appreciated your sermon, and I appreciated the children's time. But it also reminded me how there's some evil, wicked forces in the world today that are trying to drive us back 60 years and divide us based on the color of our curves. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, we all need to work together then. You know, a lot of our politicians, we get a chance to vote some of these bozos out starting with the uh, uh, primary. So. All right. Well, we lift up our country and we ask for help and healing and that God will bring us together and that uh, we will uh, know, uh, we will all work together for the common good. And so we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, Charles. Okay, uh, Meg McClintock uh, is a resident of Sky and they're on lockdown because of the coronavirus. All right, so we lift up Meg and all the residents there for uh, blessing and healing and comfort. And so we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Jody requests continued uh, prayers for the family of Steve Robert, uh, uh, who uh, died unexpectedly of a heart attack and leaves a wife and three children that are close friends of Sabrina's. And so we ask for comfort for the family of Steve Robert. And so we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. I invite now your silent prayers before God. Holy God, we see how oppression and violence are our sad inheritance, one generation to the next. 
We look for you where the lowly are raised up, where the mighty are brought down. We find you there in your servants. And we give you thanks today for your preacher and witness, Martin Luther King, Jr. Fill us with your spirit. Where our community is divided by racism, torn by repression, saddened by fear and ignorance, may we give ourselves to your work of healing. We ask this through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll sing together that first verse of It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. trying to pay our apportionments each year. Apportionments is the system of sharing that United Methodists have where uh, they collect money that goes all over the world to do ministry. And uh, we were having a hard time. It's about $20,000 a year for this congregation. But we said, look, if everybody would just give $2 a week to these 20 and more ministries that are listed on that, so that's why we call it two for 20, then we would have no problem making our apportionments each year. And really, uh, the last many years, we have not had a problem making it because you all have been faithfully giving. But some of you aren't aware about these envelopes. We're asking that you give $2 a week and then put in an extra dollar for the Rwandan widow that we support. There was a genocide in Rwanda in the 90s, and the United Methodist Church had a, created a ministry there to give these widows employment where they had none before. And they put them to work making yarn out of wool. They're, they have... Um, they have uh, goats uh, that provide wool, and these women make yarn. And so it's a wonderful ministry. It's called True Vineyard Ministries Rwandan Widow. So what we're asking is, can you afford to give us $2 a week plus a dollar uh, to help these many ministries? And your support is always greatly appreciated. Today, we'll be singing our communion responses. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast. And now with the confidence of children of God let us pray that prayer we are taught to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is this one love, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of this one loaf. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Steve and Bob? Go ahead and sanitize your hands. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Will you come? The body of Christ. 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 Like that. 
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand now as we sing that anthem of the Civil Rights Movement, another African-American spiritual, We Shall Overcome.
Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you.